With Unreal Engine's 5 shift to Lumen as the primary lighting system, many artists have found themselves missing the granular control that traditional ambient occlusion provided. While Lumen offers physically accurate global illumination, there are times when we need more artistic control over how shadows and occlusion affect our scene. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to take back that control. We'll cover two essential approaches. First, how to enable and fine-tune ambient occlusion at the scene level using console commands and post-process materials. And second, how to effectively use ambient occlusion maps in your material shaders for precise control over individual meshes. Whether you're working on a stylized project that needs specific shadow behaviors, or you're just looking to enhance the depth of your Lumen scenes beyond what Lumen provides by default, these techniques will give you the artistic freedom you need. Let's dive in and see how we can combine the best of both worlds, Lumen's physical accuracy and traditional AO's artistic control. The best way for me to show you the ambient occlusion is to use an example map from Quixel Megascans. This is the dark ruins that comes in on the Quixel bridge. So hopefully you have it either on Fab or Quixel bridge or whatever, but you know, after December, you're no longer gonna be able to get this for free. But when you look at these dark ruins, you know, they look very moody. Now, if we select the post-process volume that Quixel have added, and we change the global illumination method from Lumen to none, you'll notice that Lumen plays a very important role in this scene, and it actually looks horrible without it. So it's actually built from the ground up using Lumen. So we're just gonna put it back to Lumen, and then we wanna have a look and see, you know, just looking at all these crevices, you can see a lot of dark areas that are being calculated by the global illumination method, right? But if we switch over from lit to go to bubble visualization and then have a look at the ambient occlusion, you'll notice that there isn't any ambient occlusion in the scene at all. And I'm really sorry about this very white background. I'm just going to switch back to lit mode. And instead, we're going to use the console commands in order to get our setup going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ho hover over into my notepad in here, and then we can have a look at these two console commands. So the first one, we're going to copy this into the console command and press enter. And then the second one, we're going to take this particular one and paste it as well. Once we've pasted those two console commands, our ambient occlusion will now work in our scene. There are slight changes already. So with the global, with the post process that's set to global, this one here, we're going to have a look and see if we can change the ambient occlusion method. Now let's assume you have a new scene and there's nothing in it, then you can just, you know, get the uh, post process volume added to, the, to your scene and make sure it's actually got infinite extent turned to on, this one in here, so that it affects the whole world. Once that's done, we can have a look over at the ambient occlusion uh, settings. Now, if you want to find them in this, all this, uh, all these options in here, the best thing for you to do is just type in ambient, and that will then show up in here, right? And by default, all both of these settings are going to be set at these default values, and they will be ticked off. But if you take them on, and then you start playing around with the intensity, this is uh, going to be an intensity of zero. And this is going to be an intensity of one. And already you probably noticed that the scene got darker. So if we have a look at these stairs right here, if we set this over to zero, that's what it looks like. And this is what it looks like with 100. Oh, sorry, with one. I'm also going to change the radius from 200 to 800 in order to get a bit of a sharper edge. Now, if we're wanting to see what exactly the ambient occlusion is doing, then the best thing to do is switch over from lit over back into buffer visualization and switch this over to ambient occlusion. And this is the ambient occlusion we're getting in the world now because we added those two console commands, thus enabling Lumen ambient occlusion, or sorry, ambient occlusion with Lumen, right? SSAO. Now we're going to change these settings again. If we, you'll notice if we put it to 200, it's gonna give us an ambient occlusion that's a bit softer, and then 100 is gonna be sharper. Obviously, if you go to like one or five or something like that, it's gonna look quite terrible. So it's really up to you, but obviously the higher the values are, the more diffuse the, um, the actual 
ambient occlusion is going to look like. So 100 for me is going to be just fine. Now, if we look at the slider here from 0 to 1, you'll notice as we go to 0, the ambient occlusion fades away. And then if we bring it back on, this is what it looks like. And this just adds a lot more detail in the scene where there wasn't any detail before. Like Lumen is doing what it's supposed to be doing, but it is taking a lot of shortcuts in terms of calculations. Now, if we have a look over into the outside scene, so let me just switch back to lit mode. So if you go over here where it's more, you know, outside, you'll notice a lot of changes if we switch over from intensity of one to intensity of zero. This is what it looks like with zero. Uh, let me just, sorry, let me just deselect my post process volume. So this is what it looks like with zero, but this is what it looks like with one. So obviously a day and night difference, shall we say. So it's adding all the shadows, even inside these sort of like uh, rooms in here, where normally the uh, light bounces and creates a lot of light in them. But with this ambient occlusion, we're actually starting to cover them up in shadow, which I'm not going to say that this is going to be accurate, right? But it is adding a lot more contrast to a scene, and it can definitely drive a lot more detail where otherwise you wouldn't really have any. So yeah, that's pretty much it for ambient occlusion at the world level. Now having a look like a scene, you know, to a scene like this where we want ambient occlusion, if we're in lumen mode, there is no ambient occlusion to talk about. It's only the bounce lighting that the lumen is calculating. If we switch over to path tracing, now we'll notice that there is definitely a difference between lumen and path tracing. There is a lot of crevices that have now filled with shadows. So switching over from path tracing to lit, you'll notice in a lot of these areas that there is definitely a loss of detail there as between the two um, modes, right? So you can see path tracing is just giving us a far better result. But what if you don't want to use path tracing and you want to use Lumen, but you don't also don't want to use the ambient occlusion that I uh, you know, showed you to use with console commands, even though if we do enable those, we should be able to get some pretty decent results. If you're enjoying our content, please feel free to have a look at my Patreon. We offer all the projects over there, uh, including the CloudForge, AtmosForge, the upcoming WorldForge, and so on. There's plenty of space related tutorials and, and all sorts of assets on there as well for Unreal Engine and Blender. So yeah, if you want to, you know, for the price of a coffee, you can get access to all of that. There's probably about 30 projects, I think, in there right now. Um, all of them coming with their own sort of like options, tutorials, and all sorts of lessons as well. And all the assets are for you to use in your own projects as well. So you get like a, a professional license if you get them. So yeah, have a look and um, yeah, let's get back to the video. Thank you for watching. Now, let's say you want to enable ambient occlusion and to be able to use it with your material. And let's say where you downloaded an asset from Megascans like this barrel here. Now, when you check the actual textures inside, you'll notice that there is no a link to an ambient occlusion. So we can actually click over here into the uh, viewport of the shader and then make sure that we actually untick the use material attributes in order for us to see all of these nodes. Now we already know what's connected because we have the albedo metallic roughness and tangent normal to it, but there's nothing in the ambient occlusion slot, which means that this particular model does not have an ambient occlusion map. So, you know, that's a lot of the quick solve stuff doesn't have it or, you know, a lot of other content that you can find. But luckily we can use Unreal Engine in order to bake our own ambient occlusion. In order to do this, you have to go to Edit, Plugins, and then type in here Modeling, and make sure that you enable the Modeling Tools in Editor Mode. Just make sure this is ticked on, and then restart the, the engine, and then you should be able to use the Modeling Tools. And with those, we should be able to bake ourselves a new ambient occlusion map. Now that we have the um, Modeling Tool enabled, with the barrel selected, let me just get this material out of the way, with the barrel selected, we can actually go over here to Modeling, and then we can go over to Bake and select Bake Textures. And over in here, once this opens, we should be able to choose our ambient occlusion. Now, this may take a bit of time depending on your hardware. There's nothing you can really do about it. Uh, but once it opens, which for some reason is taking far longer than anticipated, right there we go, now we have it. Uh, once this opens, you will be able to change the, uh, you know, sort of like the output type to ambient occlusion. And then in here you can select the resolution. So I think uh, 1024 by 1024 should be just fine. Once you do that, you need to wait for these sort of like lines to disappear, which means that it's currently calculating. And this will be your resulting output. Now, currently, it's going to place it somewhere in an auto-generated folder, but you can actually switch this over to be to the current folder, which means that wherever this asset is located, that's where the map will be saved. 
which you know obviously helped us quite a lot in order to have a speedy kind of um, you know setup now again this will take a bit of time to calculate depending on how much uh, you know what resolution you've selected how big the mesh is how many sort of like calculations it needs to do so you will have to bear with it and depending on your hardware this thing might take a little bit of time obviously you can also bring your own ambient occlusion map from another software maybe like substance painter or whatever one thing to note is that unreal engine is using C the cpu in order to bake this it's not using the gpu like other traditional software would do to speed up the process so unfortunately it, you are going to be limited by that right so this is going to be the ambient occlusion map that will be generated you can actually even double click it here in order for us to see it so if we bring it over this is going to be the ambient occlusion map that will be generated and now we can just click the accept button and if you go into the content folder let me just get out of the modeling mode if we go over into the content folder into the mega scans wherever i've saved this this is the ambient occlusion map now we can bring that over into our material. So I'm just going to drop it over here. Uh, let me just select it, right, drop it in. And then I'm going to connect it to the ambient occlusion map. And we can now press apply, which obviously means that the ambient occlusion will be added to this mesh and we should be able to now see a difference. Now, looking at this, it's a bit odd, like what, you know, what happened? Why is it overwriting our um, a base color and this is to do with the fact that you know you, you do have to make sure that your system is using material attributes um, but you you know it might not actually take the input of the ambient occlusion which might be a bit of an issue right so some of the things that you can you can always do is like check without having any other map inside to see if it works so for example if you get rid of the material material attributes you can take these nodes and plug them in like that just to you know, just for the shortcut sake of things, just so you can quickly, uh, you're able to ideate very, very quickly. So now all of your maps are coming through directly into the material, which is fine. And if you disable all of these uh, textures, you know, like the roughness, the normal, the metallic and everything else and press apply, you should just be able to see the ambient occlusion. Now, one thing that we can also do here is to multiply this and increase its strength. So we can add a multiply node in here like that connect over to the ambient occlusion over in here create a scalar parameter so maybe AO intensity right and we'll set this over to a default value of one and plug into the B value and press apply now we can go into our material instance and we're able to control the AO intensity right so if you plug this in further or something like that you should be able to to get a, a more detail so if you put it to zero it's like that uh, no ambient occlusion and if we take it to one it's going to be like that now very important to note here is that ambient occlusion will be affected by the lights in the scene so for example in from this angle if we press it to zero you can see just how the the, the entire mesh has kind of changed but if we switch this over you know to like a 10 10 might be a bit too much though maybe a two or a one or something like that see this is what a zero looks like and this is what it looks like with an ambient occlusion. As I said, it's just using a cal pre calculation to kind of define the areas in shadow and not in shadow. So if we actually take these lights, and for example, let's say we take this one here and we now disable it, right? This is going to create a different kind of look to the barrel because of the ambient occlusion that we're using. So switching that over to zero, you can see there how it's sort of like calculating. So again, you don't want to, you don't want to go to, too far with the values but you definitely don't want to be too low either so you can see just how it's sort of like helping with this baked ambient occlusion and obviously you can bake various different ambient occlusion maps yourself in other software in different ways but this is how you get it to apply to your mesh and to make unreal engine work with it and as a final step not only are we going to like use the ambient occlusion map that comes with we're also going to be adding these two effects which are obviously quite fake in terms of how they handle ambient occlusion but this is going to help us to drive the point even further so obviously now we've enabled the mesh sorry the geometric ambient occlusion so you can see it there as i'm sort of like turning it on and maybe go for like yeah 100 seems to be okay so this is now we're using ambient occlusion from the actual post process as you can see right there and it's looking like a video game kind of ambient occlusion but it definitely helps with the contrast and on top of that we're also using the ambient occlusion of the mesh itself 
uh, baked already. So again, switching that to zero, this is how it looks like. Switching this to one, this is how it looks like now. Now, thank you all for watching. A special shout out to my amazing Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and everyone in our Discord community. You all make these tutorials possible. If you found this helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for more Unreal Engine content. I'll see you in the next one.